with GPU prices on an actual serious decline now, month after month after month, and even with manufacturers like Asus, today as of filming is April 1st, although I'll probably post this video on April 2nd, uh, but they it wasn't an April Fool's joke. They said they would be dropping their prices with the reduction in tariffs. I don't know whether the tariffs was an excuse or they just wanted to drop their prices because other people were, and they used that as an excuse to be like, that's why our prices were high, just the tariffs. But anyway, the point is, uh, it's actually possible to build a decent gaming PC right now for well under a thousand dollars. I bet that we could get a solid 1080p gaming build for 700 bucks. But let me take you through not just like here's the parts list, but let's look at like how, how do you go about planning a build and how do you juggle choices like what CPU, what GPU, do I need a CPU cooler, what motherboard do I get, how much, like like everything that you spend a little bit more money on is money that has to come off of another part if you're sticking to a particular budget. And that's the other thing that I'm gonna get at is once we get uh, like, what's the absolute cheap like $700 build? And I know like, you know, four years ago, five years ago, you could do a cheap $500 build, but okay, I think 700 is probably where we're gonna need to be here to be reasonable right now. Um, but we're also gonna look at how could we increase the budget to maybe $800, $1,000, maybe even a little bit more, and how would you go about increasing the quality of the components and how that would impact performance? Now, I highly recommend that any PC build plan starts at PC Part Picker. And that's because they're gonna allow you to choose it from a wide variety of parts that are actually in stock right now at major retailers. And I, sure, I could probably make more money if I just made my parts list on Amazon and gave you Amazon links, but you're not gonna find the best deals that way. And I wanna teach you guys how to actually like find better deals. Now, to be clear, you can actually find even better deals if you actually looked for deals and hunted for when they're in stock. But this is gonna be what's in stock now, which might not be the absolute best. Okay. So first of all, we need to pick a CPU and I wanna, we're starting out with an absolute budget build guys. And I am interested in the 12100F. And I know many of you would be like, I would never consider giving getting an i3 for a gaming build. And that's because you're probably used to lower end parts. Well, not necessarily lower end, but things like the i3 10100F. But if we look at a 10 game average over here at TechSpot, I pulled up a 1080p gaming review um, from the, 10, uh, the 12100F. Guys, it actually on average is beating a Ryzen 7 3700X and a Ryzen 5 3600. It's got a quite a significant lead over the i3 10100F and it's almost tied with a 10600K and an 11600K. It is losing to them, but only by a little bit. Now, personally, I actually think the best, uh, you know, kind of budget conscious CPU to grab is a i5 12400. F, but I'm gonna jump up to that when we look at increasing our budget. For the absolute budget build, the 12100F is surprisingly good. Now I will mention it's only four core eight thread, but it has such high single core performance and with that hyper threading up to eight threads, it's doing fine. Now in particular games like Cyberpunk, which can utilize heavily multi-threaded CPUs, it does fall a little further behind some of those, but it's minimums, it's 1% lows are still 78. And honestly guys, getting 78 FPS as your minimums in Cyberpunk, you're usually gonna be GPU limited anyway, especially on a budget build. So yeah, in the, f in the distant future, maybe I'd be a little concerned about this, but I think for right now, especially with the kind of GPU we're gonna be pairing this with, this makes perfect sense. So yes, I'm going to choose the 12100F as long as it's actually in stock right now. And by the way, why the F model and what is what does the F mean? That just means you don't have the integrated graphics chip. And notice that right now that's saving me like $35 by just not having the integrated graphics chip, which I don't need. Now a 12400F is gonna be like 70 or $80 more than this. So we're saving a lot of money by going with the i3. Now, it also should come with a box cooler and we're gonna use that. You could upgrade the cooler later, 
Honestly, I think you'll get pretty much the full performance out of the stock cooler here. This is gonna save us a lot of money on our budget that we could put towards something like a GPU. Uh, maybe if you found it was too noisy or too hot for your liking, in the future, you could buy a cheap 20 to $50 cooler. Um, you know, but I, I think for our purposes here, we don't need to get a cooler. Now I'm gonna sort compatible motherboards priced low to high. And I think I know what I'm gonna see, and I was right. And some of you are going to jump at me, <laughs> okay? And I'm gonna pull up the review that you're thinking of. I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna pick this anyway. Okay, so first of all, you need to understand what these, what, what these things mean. You've got motherboards like the H610, but then you have B660, then you have uh, H5, uh, H670, and then you have Z690. There's all these different motherboards. Okay, the H610 ha is, could work, but it has a lot of compromises to the amount of like PCI lanes of various types. Um, I think you only ever get two memory slots. Now, not that every other motherboard will have more than that, even if it is a B660M, but th there's a lot of compromises on the H610. So the B660M will generally have more features. And yes, I know this is the ASRock board of this review. I know, Hardware Unbox just absolutely trashed this, but you know what they have to say in their final thoughts? Should I play a little clip of it? They basically say, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't wanna like, like steal their thing there. I just know this is what you guys are talking about, but here's what they say. They say, it's fine on a 12 one, well, they say 12400. So they basically say this could go up to a 12400 without throttling. This is just gonna limit your further upgrade paths because it will throttle something better than a 12400. If you wanted to put a 12600, 12900, 12700 in here, it's, it's a terrible choice. And they're absolutely right to call out ASRock for the misleading CPU support that they list on this thing but it actually will run the 12100F just fine, okay? And we can even upgrade to a 12400, we just shouldn't go past that. Now again, why did I pick this? Let me go back to that list. Why, did, why am I going with this one that has all those negative reviews? Well, the next cheapest B660 is from Gigabyte, and I don't know this particular board, but they're generally not that amazing either on their, on their low-end boards, but that's still, it, um, $120, whereas what we were getting was, and let me double check, it's the, it's the cheapest one. Yeah, it's $120 if we want the next B660M. So this is $25 difference between these two boards, and because we're running such a low-end CPU, this is going to be fine. I'm still gonna get comments saying, you shouldn't get that ASRock board, Hardware Unbox did a review, because I know you're just skipping to my build list and you didn't listen to a dang thing I just said. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's continue. So we've got this locked down. Now, generally, I think you should get 16 gigabytes of RAM and you shouldn't on a low end build worry too much about the speeds, but you should also see what you can get cheap and if you know one thing's obviously better than another. You should also not get a single 16 gigabyte stick, you should get two by eight so you can run a dual channel. And I'm gonna sort price low to high on a two by eight kit and see what things are. So for $54, we can get DDR4 3000 with 16 on the cast latency. Whereas for an extra $1, we can get it up to DDR4 3200. And I don't think that there's any point going beyond that on this particular low end budget build. So we're just gonna go ahead and pick that one, pay the extra dollar for the extra 3,200 instead of 3,000. All right, so the next thing I want us to get, like, I mean, the, really the important thing here is the video card, okay? So I think the price on RTX 3050s has come down, but here's what I'm gonna show you guys. So you can search, I'm gonna search all of the um, basically new graphics cards, right? I'm gonna select all of those. We're gonna sort price low to high. So the cheapest things you can get right now are 6,500 XTs, and they're still over MSRP, and honestly, even the $200 MSRP on the 6,500 XTs is silly at that price point. I think you should really just be considering a used graphics card that actually has an encoder, unless you just, yeah. 
I don't know, guys. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go that low end on this build, even though we could. Now the next step up here is the RTX 3050, and this is what I like to see. You know how I said that Asus said that they lowered prices on their cards. They actually did, and this has been sitting in stock all day. It's $300, and let me be frank here, the RTX 3050 should not cost $300. This GPU makes a lot more sense at $200 to $250, and I hope that we see it get down there. But right now, that's where it is. Now, I'm gonna say right now, I'd highly recommend getting an RX 6600 over this, but, this is currently uh, enough less money, finally, <laughs> uh, that, that this is actually, I think, gonna be my initial budget build recommendation. Now, take a look here. So I've got this relative performance chart at Tech Power Up. This isn't perfect, but an RTX 3050 is basically a 1660 Super, 1660 Ti, GTX 1070 level of performance except that it does have DLSS. It also has ray tracing, but I honestly think that's irrelevant on this class of a GPU. Maybe you disagree and you like playing games at low resolution, upscaled with low frame rates. But DLSS, on the other hand, I think is fantastic for a budget gaming uh, solution to extend its longevity. Because even at 1080p, DLSS looks reasonably okay and can significantly boost your frame rate and I think could help the lifespan of the card. Now. The RX 6600 is almost 30% faster. So I'm gonna say it could make a lot of sense to upgrade to that, and that is gonna be my next step up that I would recommend. If you have it in your budget, get the RX 6600 at least. That's gonna be more almost on par with the 2060 Super, RTX 2070. It's not as good as a 3060, but the price difference right now, I think still makes the 6600 make a whole heck of a lot of sense. Now, why didn't I get the 6600 now? Well, let's double check, but the cheapest ones in stock aren't usually that close to this. So the RX 6600, is coming in if we price low to high. Yeah, as an extra $70. So you're gonna pay an extra $70, but you might get almost 30% better gaming performance. Honestly, I'm almost tempted to, I've, I've almost convinced myself, but I think for our absolute low end build, we're gonna go with this and then we'll say we could upgrade it from there. But it could make a lot of sense just to do it now. Okay, so now we just need a power supply that can support this and then think about the storage and the case. So a power supply that can support this. I like to just price low to high because sometimes you can actually spot a reasonable deal on one of these things. Now, on a power supply, you have to be more careful than you might think if you don't know a lot about this. If you get too cheap of a power supply, like they can be extremely unreliable, they can break, they could actually fry other components in your PC. You don't wanna go way too cheap on these things. You also maybe don't need as much wattage as you might think. So what I'm doing is I'm scrolling through the prices low to high, and I'm looking for something that jumps out to me either with a lot of good reviews if I don't know much about it. Um, so like, for example, honestly, this one, Corsair is a reasonably well-known brand. Uh, 550 watts could be fine. I don't really care if it's modular or not. Um, 13 five-star reviews. That actually seems pretty reasonable. I'm just gonna scroll down a bit further I'm pretty partial to the EVGA BQs, and I think this was even one of the ones that uh, Gamers Nexus tested recently. I don't know about this particular wattage, it might have been. Lots of five-star reviews. That one's jumping out at me as a pretty reasonable option. I'm gonna scroll down a bit further. It looks like if we're willing to go up with the EVGA BR, we can go up to 600 watts, lots of five-star reviews. It's not that much more money. And that's gonna support a fairly high-end GPU, to be honest, if you wanted to upgrade in the future. So I'm actually gonna select this one. So I didn't go with the absolute cheapest. EVGA is a decent brand. This one in particular seemed to have a lot of happy customers. So we're gonna go with that. Where's our price? We're up to a little over $600 and we just need to fit in a storage and a case, which I'd like to get for about 50 bucks each and keep this at about a $700 build. I think we might go a little bit over. Now for storage, because I'm on going on such a tight budget, I, wanna, I, I think we're gonna go for 500 gigabytes and that you'll plan on upgrading your storage later. You could definitely go with a terabyte right off the bat if you feel like you need it right off the bat. Games these days can be 100 gigabytes or more, although a lot of them are less, so you know, 
think about how many games you need installed right now. So I'm going to click the SSD button, because don't buy a hard drive, <laughs> as your main drive at least. Maybe as a mass storage drive, if you just need to have a ton of videos or games all at the same time. OK, we're going to go price low to high. Now, you can get SATA drives, but honestly, it's not usually much more to get an M.2 drive. Now, I'm also seeing if anything jumps out at me as being better than the other stuff. OK, an Intel 670p. Notice the Intel 670p at $50 is only just like $5 more than some of these uh, lesser known brands that I, I think aren't going to perform quite as well. I could be wrong on that. I know the 670p is a pretty decent performer. I've seen reviews on it. So I'm actually going to select that one. I think that's a fairly solid SSD. So that puts us up here to almost $700. we got to fit in a cheap case. Oh, but uh, guys, I hate picking cases. I'm going to be honest with you guys. That's, that's the thing I hate. I, I just absolutely hate about doing these like build planning videos. So I'm scrolling through the popular ones and just seeing if anything seems reasonably priced. OK, how about this Fractal Design Focus G? And I'm just going to be honest, guys. This is a placeholder. You might not want a white case, OK? Now, why am I picking this one? For one thing, I'm pretty sure it actually comes with a couple reasonable fans. And it looks like it has the open, open design on the front. I think it looks nice. And I know Fractal's uh, a well-known and, and good brand, although this is clearly a budget case from them. It had some reasonable reviews. And it didn't seem too crazy expensive. A lot of the cases I would like a lot better than this are more like $100. And I'd rather put that money towards a better GPU or something rather than, than go from there. So OK, here it is. OK, it's not quite $700, but $731. And you're actually getting a pretty solid 1080p gaming PC. So what should we upgrade from here? I think if you want to make the absolute biggest jump in performance from here for gaming, it's going to still be the GPU. Because as we saw from this CPU review, this 12100F, I think, can actually push out more frames than, this, than our GPU can, which means I don't think it makes sense to upgrade the CPU first. I think it makes sense to get, start hitting the limit of the CPU before you upgrade it. Unless some of you guys are going to be more focused on a long-term longevity of the platform, and in which case you might invest more in the CPU up front. But I'm going to say that let's ditch the 3050 now and go with that 6600. So let, let's slot in that 6600. And I think that's going to make this an $800 build. Let's, uh, yeah, it looks like we can get one right here for 370. And that does push us right to $800. I want to be honest, guys, I think that's worth it. I really do. <laughs> OK, so this will be more of my recommended build. Um, if you need a, uh, to stay you know, as low price as possible, but guys, a 30% gaming performance jump for that extra little bit of money, I think it's absolutely worth it on the build overall. OK, so I think that's the way to go. Now, at this point, I do think if we're going to upgrade the GPU further, it would make sense to also upgrade the CPU. OK? Now, you could probably sneak in a 6600 XT here and not have too many issues on the, um, on the CPU. So let's just throw this out as an option, OK? The 6600 XT, um, again, if we look at it compared to the uh, RTX 3050, OK? The 6600 XT is going to be over 50% performance gain. And you can see it's also a significant performance jump from the RX 6600. So this is definitely worth doing. And um, I, I think, I mean, we can see if like a RTX 3060 is in this price range at all. OK, the 3060 is right about the same price right now. So you could consider this. So let's look at it. Do we want the 3060 or do we want the 6600 XT? Well, the 3060 compared to the 6600 XT, you're going to get, it looks like, about 12% better 1080p performance. But you're going to have much worse ray tracing performance. And the lack of DLSS, although you know FSR 2.0 question mark coming soon. 
So I think this is gonna be a toss up and it's gonna depend on your personal preferences. Are you going to use ray tracing? If you're interested in ray tracing, I think it might make sense to go with the 3060 here if it's the same price as the 6600 XT or, if it's, or especially if it costs less. Um, my personal preference would be for the faster rasterized performance. I don't think the 3060's ray tracing is good enough that I would actually use it. And so I'm going to go with the 6600 XT at this price point. But you could choose otherwise. Okay, here's the thing. How much do I care about cooler models? Uh, not that much, but for $5, I might go with Sapphire just because in general... I have better feelings about Sapphire than I do ASRock. Okay, that takes us to $900. So our $900 build is, I think, like I said, at this point, the 12100F is feeling like a real, um, not necessarily a bottleneck for real, <laughs> but it's definitely the lowest end component here, like compared to the GPU, it's starting to get a little bit lopsided. So if I was going to bump this up a bit more, I think I would pay for the 12400F before I would upgrade my GPU. Otherwise, I think we're just getting too imbalanced and seriously limiting the future upgrade paths of the GPU. So in my opinion, that was about as far as I would take that 12100. The 12400F, on the other hand, getting up to six cores with 12 threads and really high performance on those cores. Again, I think we can actually see that in this review. The 12400 here is right up there, like beyond the gaming performance of like a 10700K. This is a, uh, it's, it's very, very close neck and neck with the 5600X, a little bit behind it. It's a very, very solid gaming CPU. And that brings us to $971. So for less than $1,000, this is actually now getting to be a really solid 1080p system and even a fairly reasonable 1440p system, although the 6600 XT isn't a super strong 1440p card. Okay, guys, this video is getting so long that I think that's where I'm going to leave it other than we could now start scrolling through GPUs, okay? So let's go back to this list, right? So if I just pull up all of the modern GPUs and we go price to performance, I think at this point you really could uh, just start looking at, okay, how much would it cost me to get something better than a 6600 XT? And then popping over to your tech power up list or something similar and seeing how much more performance than that, whatever GPU you're looking at would get. Like if you could get a 3060 Ti, that is another, you know, decent jump in performance. The 6700 XT would be a similar jump. Again, the Nvidia card getting you that better ray tracing performance, which you might start considering usable up in this higher performance bracket, at least maybe. I, I don't even use it on my 3080 guys, to be honest, but <laughs> okay. Um, I really think it's the next gen of GPUs. Where, where you're really gonna start caring about that. And the problem here is that even though prices have been coming down, uh, I haven't really been seeing, at least sitting in stock, any any super great prices. Looks like the 6700 uh, XT starts coming in around this $600 mark, which is a pretty big, that's a pretty big price jump for 14% gaming performance upgrade. I don't know, guys. I think I'm gonna leave it here on my recommendations. Um, sometimes, like, okay, and honestly, the 3070 Ti, if you wanna see, like, how far you can push things, I have started to see that coming in around $700 or so. Uh, I've seen it lower than this. But once you get past this point, you really have to jump up to about $1,000 before you start seeing the 3080s. So I think the 3070 Ti is, is the last one that might make any sort of sense if you're at all budget conscious. Um, I hope to see prices coming down. Now, a lot of people are like, why would you build right now like with the uh, you know new, new generation of GPUs coming out and all that? And I might do a more full video talking even more about this in the future, but why don't, why don't we end with that conversation? So here's the thing. 
There's a lot of value in having something now instead of having something six months from now. Because when the new generation of GPUs launch, it's gonna be the high-end cards. And they're probably gonna get scalped and have limited availability, at least for the first few months around launch. Guys, that didn't, that's not a new thing. That happens with most GPU launches. We see huge <laughs> um, uh, supply issues at first. And that's not even just with this horrible 2020 launch and, and extending uh, until now, pretty much. That, that's normal. Also, it's the high-end cards that launch first. So if you're looking at this kind of 1080p low to mid-range build, I think you might be waiting until months into 2023 before those car your you know 60 class cards even launch. And like I said, when they launch, they could still have limited availability and some scalping of them. And we really don't, you know, we can't know that for sure, but I'm just saying you could be waiting another year or so if you're really waiting for the new generation of mid-range cards to actually be uh, launched in stock and available around MSRP. And we don't know if there'll be any other kind of shortage or disaster or anything. And also, even MSRPs have been getting steadily worse. So I'm not too hopeful that we're gonna see some massively uh, amazing <laughs> you know, price to performance deals coming out, guys. So now it is possible to see our current GPUs actually get to or then hopefully below MSRP. So yeah, if you do wait a bit, you might be able to get a better deal, but they could also go back up. We really don't know. Um, anyway, this video is too long. I'm gonna end it, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.